At 5.31, we'll call this uh, meeting of the Whitman Middle School Building Committee to order. Um, hope everyone had a good day today. Uh, this meeting is being recorded uh, for future broadcast. Uh, just to remind everyone of that. And as we start all meetings, we join in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Sorry about that, Don. We didn't see you coming in. A high chair, huh? As Gus Murray after the pledge, you can join me for the call in the silence. Thank you. First on the agenda is the request for services uh, for the owner's project manager. Uh, MSBA finally got back to us today. Everyone's had a chance to receive the copy and take a peek at it. Uh, I was not in attendance at the last meeting, but from what I could see from the changes that were sent back to MSBA, uh, this was the same. Uh, does anyone have any comments or uh, items on that? Or is everyone in a somewhat of agreement that it's the same document that was voted? All right, seeing no one bringing anything up. Uh, I would entertain a motion to approve the final request for services as presented. Motion. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Any can, further actually, discussion? Actually, Fred, can you further recording? Motion by Randy, okay. second by Chris. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. And any further discussion? All in favor? And opposed and abstaining, none, so it's unanimous. Uh, that motion carries. I would also entertain a motion uh, to vote to advertise the RFS in the Central Register and the local paper. Motion by myself. Motion by Randy. Randy. Gotcha. Second by Chris. <laughs> Any further discussion? All in favor? And once again, unanimous. And we're off to the races. Uh, Whitman Middle School Feasibility Study Account. Counting uh, invoices for approval. We've incurred a few expenses, very few, uh, basically related to our uh, first uh, submissions into the newspapers. But it got us thinking that we need to also have a process in which the monies flow from the town of Whitman to the school district or the invoices flow. Uh, in thinking about how things would work perhaps the easiest as with the, a capital project. The monies are held by the town of Whitman. The school district would get the invoice presented to the town and the town would pay the school district. The school district would pay the vendor. Uh, I think that's a pretty easy way of doing things. I think that the district probably has more staff available for the accounts payable uh, to be able to facilitate that end of things. And also it's a nice check and balance because the monies do have to flow through Whitman as well. Uh, I don't know if anybody else has an opinion or an idea on that. Does, Whit does Whitman have the, the monies or does it, do they have to borrow the 850 or is it already incurred? It's already, it's already uh, there. It's encumbered. It's encumbered. It's encumbered. Perfect. Uh -huh. So that would. <coughs> and I'm going to ask Mr. Stanbrook, you know, your opinion. No, I just I, you already have the eight eight fifty in encum encumbered funds. Yes. Yes. Uh, you don't need to borrow it to, in order to fund it. Okay. So it was uh, it was oh, passed yeah. at town meeting oh, with. Uh, Monies that was available awesome. out of uh, various uh, projects or accounts oh, okay. or free cash. I'm not sure exactly the funding source, but I don't have any questions at all. I thought I thought we'd have to borrow for this money. I no. didn't know that you already had it. Yeah. Uh, look up the warrant wording exactly. Just uh, no C 
service, but yeah, we, we did not borrow. The, there was discussion at the time of uh, would that have been a, a good way to get, you know, test the waters, and uh, I, th I think consensus was the best way to be able to test the waters was to actually be able to present a full project to the town, and that's why uh, we opted not to borrow for the funds for that. So, you, yeah, yes. No questions. Good. Barring me, myself, and Fred having this completely wrong. And no, I agree. I was there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Meeting okay. 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 Yeah. And, and if I'm not mistaken, MSBA wouldn't allow us to get to this point without having the funds right. available as well. That was one of the things we had to show them. Just the other thing on process. Do you, does this committee want to see the invoices before we pay them and approve them or not? I would think we should have a, uh, and the ability for us to sign off on them before they go to the town. Before they go to the town or before they get paid? Or before they get paid either or. Okay. I guess would be the most I just have a question. Is there sure. a time sensitive aspect to that? You know, because sometimes we're like signing warrants and looking at them and asking questions. I, I'm just, I just want to know if there's a time sensitive aspect to that. John, do you know? Some, with, with these bills that we've had since late June, um, but as we go forward, we are going to be under some timelines in order to pay things promptly. So it just we'll have to have to have meetings and we'll have to turn things around quickly once we get rolling. Sure. Uh, but I think it's important that this committee sees what's being spent. I agree. And it just authorizes it and it's just another layer. I don't know how everyone else feels. That's my personal feeling. And I do know at least the one other school building project I was on, that's the way it did work. Perfect. Just asking that question because that might be, I don't think it'll be a weekly, but it'll probably be a, a bi weekly and once we get going, you know, as things roll in. Yeah. So, or bi weekly or in the Typically, what's the turnaround on invoices? We usually have in 30 days. 30 days. So, we should have a meeting within 30 days to, yep. to do that. Okay. 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 Uh, I guess I would entertain a motion. Just to, um, I mean, I, I you know I personally like the idea of seeing them. Uh, do we just do we want to designate a, a couple people to right, yeah. sign? So we were we talking about a subcommittee. So, yeah, so we don't need to. We have, we have a warrant subcommittee for school committee. With the whole committee to, you know, for a couple hundred dollar bill, we kind of have a. You know, meeting for that, and, and then I'm thinking it's going to go to our accountant anyway, which could be. Uh, if there's any major issues, it's, it's going to go through whatever subcommittee mm -hmm. designees we have to sign, and then the yeah. town accountant obviously is is another set of eyes on it, if questionable. I, I don't know. If process wise, it, it makes it easier just to have a smaller group yeah. sign. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. well, I think to that, I think I agree with Randy because. I think the ability to see what the invoices are is one thing for the whole committee. But I think if it's a time sensitive to make sure that they can get paid and move forward on it, might just be a smaller, a smaller subset of the committee. If you know that might be something we want to look at. We could do it this way: the way the school committee used to operate, uh, three signatures required. It can be any three committee members, uh, you know, that can make it to the building, uh, but the balance of the committee would be able to look at them at the following meeting, mm -hmm. yes. you know, yeah, something fine. of that nature. So, I mean, you know, there's some of us that are more available than others during the day to come and sign. I so think the speak. invoices can be dropped right into the, to the Google Drive to be reviewed. You know, we send them out just, and you people can peruse them, but uh, instead of formulating this committee... Oh, wait a second. I'm just thinking where it's not a quote-unquote legal like the school committee has to have legally sign off on those. Mm -hmm. This building committee does not legally have to sign off. It's creating its own internal control. So we could do it from the Google Drive and post them on the Google Drive and just ask everyone if you have an objection to something to please, you know, email back or question and do it that way. It does feel like you put a checks and balances in from school to town town back to school there's that checks and balance already so I think just seeing it is probably better I, I'm okay with that too as soon as we get it you know people can you know 
see them, we get 24 hours, 48 hours, and if there's no questions or whatever, consider it signed. Whatever, whatever, whatever works. A full committee, a subcommittee, a Google Drive, whatever. I just agree with Randy. Getting, if I have a bill for the newspaper for 50 bucks, and we have to come here for 25 minutes, it takes people longer to get here than to actually have the meeting. Yep. Yeah. I, I mean, for what it's worth, and I hope I don't offend anybody, I would think that if it's in the Google Drive, that's the review stage. But I would think that somebody should be signing, like somebody should be saying a smaller subset to look at them if there are questions. Because I think that if we leave it out to 18, 19 people before the invoices are paid, somebody's going to say, well, how come the plaster for this person went there? And then I think it gets left in the wind as to how to efficiently get it done. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, just to extend on what George was saying, this is the, what, what, what is the process if someone did have an objection to a certain cost on an invoice? What we would do is address the question, and if they still had a problem with it, uh, I guess we'd have to bring it up at a meeting. Right. Yeah, you know, so that we could all vet it, etc. I don't anticipate anything crazy like that happening, but you never know. Oh, I'm sorry, Chris. No problem. Um, could we just, if we do um, decide to go to Google Doc route for review, could we just make sure to specify, like, you know, which ones are, are you know, I mean, I'm assuming as we go, you're going to have a, a little bit of a backlog of bills, and then it's going to be cut off, and there's going to be more. So I just want to be able to distinguish which ones are up for yeah. payment yeah, right. and which ones gotcha. are yeah. for review. Know, next go around. Right. You know what I, mean? I would think that we would do a folder. I think so. Yeah. You know, and just yeah. invoices. Invoices. Well, that's all I'm saying. Just you know, uh, 921. You know, uh, the next folder might say invoices 927. Something like yeah, that. So yeah. just something that helps us distinguish yeah. between what's current, sure. um, well, what's up for you know to be paid and what's going to get paid next time, or something like that, just so we can easily disseminate and uh, uh, rather uh, interpret what's uh, on the on the draft. You know. Who here would be available during the day? I am. No, I could be. Okay. And I could be. You know, in most cases, sometimes I do travel or. So there will be crowds. Um, so what if we did it with yeah. two signatures? Right. It goes out to the committee, mm -hmm. and then after 36 hours, mm -hmm. say a day and a half, if there are no uh, objections to the email, email goes out to uh, two people in an alternate, okay. you know, and uh, to come in and just sign off on it. So I, I think I think reasonable? I think that sounds. But if there's a question on the e on that, the email should go to you and myself. Correct. Because we don't want to be deliberating. Correct. So it's just not a, a group. It should go back to you and me. Correct. And and that way, there we can either answer that to that person and then share that question with the other signers, so that everybody's in. You can share that information. Okay. Randy. Uh, well, and just to clarify, I mean, we're only talking right now feasibility. Right. Yeah, Correct. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there really shouldn't be a no. tremendous amount of invoices. I think there's going to be big money invoices, right. small, like, small number of invoices for bigger money. Right. Yeah. Well, quality of one. Yes. Right, right, yes. Right. Um, so, I, and then I think the process probably, and that's where we have the money right. to decide. Obviously, we don't have the money for the whole side. Right. Yeah. Um, but I think probably we'd have to come up with some other process yeah. during the building phase. Yeah. I, I don't. Yeah. I don't think scanning in. Makes no. Sense. No. You're right. Every, every, no. What, yeah, if, once we're in the building good. phase, I think it has to be a another totally yeah. different dialogue. Yeah. Yeah. You know, hopefully, very shortly, we'll be having a project manager that will be putting all these together as well. Dave, then Don. Go with Don. Okay. Uh, I was going to say pretty much the same thing, but it, it's. I don't, I don't feel extremely comfortable seeing the invoices to approve. I'd, I'd rather know the invoices are coming in front of a PO base or at least an email saying that these these expenditures are, are going to be coming. That's that's the way I do it in, in the private sector. Um, that, I think that's more checks and balances that way so we know what what's coming down the pipe instead of just here are the invoices. Approval. What really is your 
No, your options at that yeah, point. We the should have an are, idea. The services are already run this, basically. I would think we're going to have an idea anyways as to what's coming. Uh, it's just the, unfortunately, you know, with the process the way it needs to go from us to the town and then the town back to us, mm -hmm. I just think that it's the, the committee has a fiduciary responsibility, mm -hmm. you know, to oversee the bills and make sure that everything's correct. Uh, whereas you might hire a manager in the private sector and he's responsible for what he's doing, his department signing off and going forward. I think that we're all that responsible. And, and that's party. probably where, where, what Jeff would be doing too, is, but he could just say, listen, we got this bill coming or th these services need to be uh, executed. Uh, the bill should be coming, you know, I figure the services will take, be completed at whenever and the invoice should come shortly after that. At least it's kind of, maybe not a PO base, but at least kind of a heads up base that we'll this, these type of services are gonna be needed. Like we know that we are going to have bills for what we just voted for, right. you know, the newspaper ads, et cetera. Right. The ad in Central Register. So we know that's coming. That'll happen within our meeting, okay? But the actual looking at the invoice and then having the small subset to sign off on it. It's just, I think, our fiduciary responsibility and the proper way to do it. Chris? Um, I guess my thought is when we get to the next phase, we're going to be saying, um, the, you know, our, whoever we hire uh, to oversee the project is going to be able to track these invoices and have POs and mm -hmm. things like that, I'm sure. But in this phase, it's, in, you know, best probably if we just yeah and don't get me wrong a project manager is going to have all of this documentation right. far easier it's not going to come from central office it's going to come from the project manager because right. they're also one of their responsibilities is to take every bill every invoice and be able to submit that over to one MSBA uh, so it'll be in conjunction with them we probably get a little tighter within our committee and we'll sign off you know, because we'll be meeting a little bit more often once we uh, go to the next phase, so to speak. Ready? Right. Just on, I completely understand what Dawn's saying, and I, the way I see the feasibility is, I, I think our actions will, during the feasibility stage, what, gen, what will generate the, the cost aspect. So mm -hmm. I, I think in, in that regard, we, we kind of will know what's coming down the pipe because we're right. approving it. You're Maybe not a dollar for a dollar, but. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, well, t t typically the way you see, I mean, it, uh, when you're tracking costs, is, so you have a fees just take the feasibility study, you'll have that, you know, if you think of an outline, that, that's, your, that's your subject, and then you'll have an outline in, of all, dis all different tasks, when they're those tasks, you have subtasks. This OPM is gonna, I mean, that's how they bid their project. They, they think they're gonna have this much money towards each of these tasks and, and subtasks. So you know, if you if you track, you know, we'll be able to track it. We'll be able to ask the owner, owner of the project manager, just on at least on his side, you know, develop this chart, you know, tasks, estimated, invoiced, and it's and it's a simple Excel spreadsheet that you just you know you, you know you know it's you know it's budgeted, and you know it's going invoice towards it. So if you see you know if you, if we're in a certain phase, and things are getting close to that task maximum. You know, we, then, then we have the ability to start asking questions ahead of time, be proactive to avoid any cost overages on, on certain tasks. But, you know, I, I'm kind of jumping ahead, but, 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 you know, to go to Don's point, the PO process, you'll probably, you'll probably see that process for the feasibility study and for, the, for the, all the contractors that are involved in this project. And, you know, tracking it toward, tracking it toward a, a, a proposed activity, is, I think, is paramount because you don't want you want to be able to do that you want to be able to know what what you know what am i going to be spending for this this part of the building so you know if if there are cost overruns you can find you you know you can you can identify that real quick it, it's just a, a way of tracking costs really easy i was just you know could could that be um, kind of uh, covered in the interview process to make sure that these you know um, whoever we hires yeah, I think I think actually I don't know what the specific language says, but I mean I would imagine that anyone we hire is going to have a um, you know pretty uh, typical kind of process that they use that includes tracking invoices and things like that. Now, if there's something that we want to do to 
uh, ask them to go you know, above and beyond, and that would be the point to do it, right? Yeah, but I think that what Dave's describing, that basic, no, I is it. something they have to do anyways. Well, in order it doesn't to hurt to, you know, if yes. this is what we decided, right. we just make sure on the interview process that right. they're going to do it the way we want. I mean, we're kind of jumping ahead here, but what you want to avoid, you want to avoid big sure. lump sums. Because, okay, yeah, I, I can do these activities for a million bucks. Well, maybe he did this for a dollar, and now he's going to take, you know, he's going to take 999000 and put it in his pocket. So, you know, those, those are the things you want to avoid. That's, that's why I'm talking about the subtasks. But, but one of the things that we may, we're, we're, we're evaluating on is the management pro approach. And, 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 yeah, some type of question to that effect should be asked during the uh, selection uh, time. Great. That's why you guys are... On that committee, because you know better than yeah, you need a motion, right? Uh, yeah. So I would uh, be looking for a motion that uh, we create a two-member. Well, we have we want to take the money from the, the process first. Okay. Okay. So you need really two motions. You need the process and then the subcommittee. So the motion for the process would be that the district would take the invoice, send it to Whitman for. Uh, them to pay us and we would submit for payment. I would be looking for a motion for that process. So moved. Chris? Second. Randy. Moved by Chris, second by Randy. Uh, when, one last, uh, one last question. Uh, so uh, if, these, if these documents are, uh, so 30, 30 days is a typical turnaround time for a, a typical request for a vendor. Um, you know, the wheels of government move slowly, right? But if you put these documents up at, uh, uh, on Google Docs right away, Assuming that the, the you know assuming that you you know that between the district and the town that's going to take three weeks you know, the, I, I assume that that can be done within three weeks I, th I think giving giving people uh, five business days to to to, to make comments is is, a, is more is, a, is, a, is more reasonable that, that way you know that way your you know you kind of your section your 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 lumps of invoices are now kind of in five five day increments uh, to, a certain, to a certain degree. Okay, and we can cover that on the next motion. Okay. Uh, this one's simply the procedure of the invoice, uh, but I got an idea and I like that I actually. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? And once again, unanimous. Okay. Now the second motion. The second motion would be to create a small subcommittee uh, to sign the warrants, but the warrant, uh, warrant, the invoices would be delivered uh, as they're received. Now, the invoices will still go to the town immediately without the, before the committee signs off. The invoices will go down that trail, so to speak, or at least start. But before the invoice gets paid, the committee has to have signed off. So just a question, the invoices is gonna, are going to come to us and we're going to send them to the town for this committee to review? The committee is going to review it while it's in transit to the town. Okay. That's not what I understood. Okay. That process here. Right, are, you have a qu are you thinking the same thing? I, I think so. Will they, <clears throat> so will, will the OPM bill you? He'll bill us. Right. And then you'll he's... be submitting for reimbursement. Correct. So we'll get the invoice, we'll post the invoice. Once this committee approves the invoice, we pay the invoice and submit it to the town for reimbursement. Oh, okay. And your account, okay, okay. we'll see that like, too. Like the other capital Just project. Just like any right. other capital project. Okay, so we're going to pay the invoice? Yeah, we'll pay it up front. So there's no lag time. There's Just no in lag. case. Okay, so five days should be sufficient? I think so. You know, five business days? Yeah, I think that's, that's, be sufficient, that's sufficient as far as that goes. Should be more than enough. Uh, so what we would do is uh, have it that uh, We'd ask that everyone please look at it immediately because if there are questions, that way they have, they can be responded to quicker and it won't you know drag up the time clock so to speak. So the process would be this: uh, the whole committee would get this in a packet, have five days to review it, and if there are any questions, to get the questions to either Jeff or myself within five days. And then, let me just finish yeah, my thought before sure. I forget it. Uh, Thank you, Mike. And then the small subcommittee that we're going to create would then come in and just sign off on them physically. You just said packet. I think you meant or, Google, Google The invoices. 
Well, right, the packet on the Google Drive. Gotcha. That's okay. what I meant, because they'll be individualized by date. Yep. So that way there, we can, so what I envision is there being so a folder on the Google clear. Drive that yeah. says invoices, mm -hmm. and then it'll yep. be by date. Yep. So it'll be all. That's what uh, I'm saying. A folder and a subfolder and a subfolder. So just group together. Yeah. yeah. That's all. Does that sound uh, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> like something that everyone is palatable with? Yep. Yeah. That would work. Sure. I, I would make a motion that a subcommittee is established for review of uh, feasibility study bills. Uh, this will include a Google Drive packet to uh, visibility committee members to see the bills uh, with a five-day review. Uh, Subcommittee will be made up of five, okay. two, three, two, two, two or three. three. And I will, Lincoln will, yes, because he's in town. Uh, five members requiring two, a oh. minimum of two signatures. Yes, That's perfect. Okay, and I can be one of the members. Yep. And then we'll vote that subcommittee yeah. next. Mm -hmm. so. Yep. Uh, so that's the process. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? And that's unanimous. Okay, and as far as the subcommittee goes, I don't know if we'll need a motion or I can just appoint. No, I think I'd like to make a motion. That, yeah. that the invoice subcommittee is created requiring, uh, having five members and requiring two signatures in order to move forward with uh, invoice approval. With uh, the release of the check. Yeah. Second. Okay. Motion and a second. Okay, George. Yep. Uh, any uh, further discussion? Let's uh, talk about who the subcommittee, we might as well name it right here as well. I think you can. Yeah. Lincoln's not here. He's not here. He gets on it. So, so. Got Lincoln, <laughs> Beth, Randy, Lincoln's the myself. Chair. We need a fifth. I can Jeff, do it. Okay. John Bob. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we have five. That's excellent. Great. All right. Thank you. All in favor? Awesome. Okay, that is done. Uh, discussion of times for future meetings. Uh, yeah. Times just, and dates. I just had a question back on, on uh, oh. these that are outstanding here. Can we vote these three so we can oh, pay I'm these sorry. tomorrow? Uh, <laughs> has everyone had a chance to review them from a prior them. submission to the committee? I have them here if you want to pass them around and take a look at them. They're just, they've been hanging around since. You just want to read them, that's fine. Thank you. I didn't want to hold things up, but I just. Oh, no, no, no. I'm glad you said something. On, so. And yeah, that'd be good too if you just read them aloud. Save time if you. Yeah, I think we'll do that. Okay, so we have a total of one thousand eleven dollars and sixty-one cents. They are divided. Uh, Gatehouse Media of New England. Uh, that was the OPM ad in the Patriot Ledger for four hundred sixty-three dollars and eleven cents. Express Newspapers, the OPM ad in the Whitman Hanson Express for $94.50. Uh, legal work from Murphy Hess Toomey Lehane for $454. Uh, and John has created Fund 6013, Whitman Middle School Feasibility Study and the Capital Projects Funds and Munis for this project. So we have a dedicated area where uh, all expenditures would go. Uh, and then we had just have the invoices with the dates as to when they appeared in the paper. Uh, does anyone else want to speak of this at all? No. Mm -hmm. I then a motion to approve as read. So moved. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Uh, one question. Uh, I'd just like to suggest, uh, I, I just did quick math on the uh, attorneys. Uh, 
Yeah, and, and this is this is kind of the point I was, I was making earlier. It, it, I think it's a lump sum. Uh, I don't know if they provided Breakdown. hours, hours and rate. Is it was it one point nine hours? One point nine hours uh, total four fifty four. So four five four to one point nine. So that's that's a billion. And the the services rendered were. They reviewed the documents, drafted certification of legal counsel, and forwarded to client. Reviewed the uh, project manager RFS for the middle school feasibility study. Yeah. So that so that would make a billing rate of two hundred thirty-eight dollars and ninety-four cents. That is, that's likely that one point nine dollars, uh, one point nine hours is probably broken up with different people at different billing rates. Mm -hmm. I'd like to ask that that in, in future that the attorneys provide a line item uh, breakout for each hour, each rate, each task. We can ask them to do the mm -hmm. Just can't prefer getting that done right now. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? Mm -hmm. Okay, and the only thing I'll ask is, Mr. Stanbrook, if you could let us know at our next meeting that that's been accomplished. That'd okay, be great. Uh, all in favor? And unanimous. Pay the bill. <laughs> Now just getting back to discussion of times and uh, dates for future meetings. Um, we ran into a little bit of a snag and I could very much appreciate trying to get uh, here from Boston for a four o'clock meeting probably next to impossible. Mm. Uh, I did uh, uh, receive an email from Mr. Galvin this morning that he couldn't make tonight's meeting because of the hour. The later it is, the more difficult it is for him. Um, and I did ask him because I know uh, when this came up and we want to be able to accommodate everybody uh, as far as days and times go, uh, you know, what day works, you know, geez, if we go on a Tuesday and we run too late, uh, you know, Mr. LaMatina has a meeting on Tuesdays occasionally, Lincoln, the town hall, and he's going to be available for the selectmen's meeting, that could be an issue. Uh, so is Tuesday a viable day? Uh, and then it has to be early enough for some folks, but other folks can't get out of Boston can definitely appreciate that. Um, Jeff and I did have discussion and we were talking about Thursdays at 530. I will say Mr. Galvin has indicated to me that Thursdays won't work for him. Um, I don't know, uh, you know what the feeling of the committee is or any other ideas. Uh, just want to bring it up. Let's try and figure it out so that we can have a dedicated day. Uh, Mr. Montana. Uh, <clears throat> I, I know the capital committee was meeting on uh, typically Thursdays. So I, I don't know if it's, uh, I, I apologize. The meeting did kind of get out pretty quick. Uh, <laughs> and uh, well, last meeting? <laughs> I personally, Tuesdays, uh, I think for myself and Lincoln work, if, if we can keep it till, uh, you know, 4.30, uh, if we could start then. Uh, you know, I also think about the uh, school personnel who, you know, has already worked, you know, worked a decent, uh, decent day and, you know, now you're extending what, what's going on in that period. Uh, I mean, I would say if the, the people who are traveling the, the longest distance, if, if you can do it at 4.30, you know, let, let's keep it on Tuesdays and the town hall employees work later that day anyway. And you're doing one shot. Yeah. yeah. Going straight through. I mean, that, that's what I would, I think. I agree. I agree. Four, 5.30 is too late for me. Right. Um, 4.30 works. Yeah, for me. 4.30 is better for me. 4 I couldn't do last time. That's why I wasn't here. But 4.30 I can do. Don. You know, it's, I work in two different locations, most of the time in Boston or Lowell. It's, you know, like I said in my email, it's extremely difficult. I mean, I'm a slave to traffic at that point. Um, I'll do what I can. I'll try to get here. But Appreciate it. You know, that's about all I can say. But <coughs> Anybody else have any other ideas? I mean, do we try and maybe go instead of 4.30, 4.45? You know, does that 15 minutes? Yeah, you know, anything helps. I mean, I think, think 4.45 is a good, good yeah. you know, benchmark. That'd be great. 
it mm -hmm. helps us on this side. Does that give you a little bit more cushion yeah. as well? And what we can also do is try to schedule around selectmen's meetings so it's an off. I mean, I don't know what, what's better for you guys. Like, is it good to go straight through so that we have to finish this meeting so you can go to the next one or make it another night for Lincoln or for you? You know what I mean? You'll so. probably get me in a better wardrobe if we're going straight through. Right, right. <laughs> so we'll, we'll do that. <laughs> we don't really care about that. <laughs> we just care about uh, the building now. But, uh, no, I, and again, just for Bob, I know, I know that's typically I can hear, you know, that hearings on those nights and yeah it's it's important that i'm at town hall at 6 30. that's that's important so. right so i mean there, there is a dead stop time but yes well, yeah. 45 yeah. by 6 15 yeah. is a nice it's a nice good. ending too right, six sure. o'clock shoot yeah. floor is 4 45 work for you Bob? yeah that'll be good work yeah and i'll just skip out if i have to right. okay. did they leave the sirens in the yeah i'll do cap? that give me a quick Okay. Lights and awesome. sirens. <laughs> All right, so, so. that uh, that works for I think the majority 4:45 on a Tuesday uh, on Tuesday nights. Okay. And, uh, but we, we don't have, have next we don't have date. one because of the. Do we have another meeting date, or is it just uh, going to be no. with the the subgroups? Well, we're going to have to meet right after the OPM selection group uh, right, brings forward. Yes, and that's going to be a long night. Or, yes. you know, half hour, 45 minutes of pop. Yeah, and yeah. that might be two nights, depending yes. upon how many you brought forward. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, we'll take it from there. But that will be an exciting time, and, yeah. you know, the only times we have that type of thing will be for the OPM uh, designer, and then if, uh, when we go to the full building, I don't know if the designer stays on or we pick someone else or whatever but those are always really good nights and you limit those I think to two or three presentations a night anyways okay if anyone does has anything else if not I would entertain a motion to adjourn so moved Chris second all in favor it's unanimous again <laughs> thank, thank you thanks guys